Welcome to the Bear Down Podcast by Arizona Athletics. I'm Matt Enzer, joined for this episode with Jill Aguilera, Arizona soccer, a career scoring leader, uh, an NCAA Woman of the Year nominee, and a, a Wildcat with a very interesting life story. So thanks for joining us, Jill. Happy to have you. Thanks for having me. So uh, we'll get to the nipping at the heels of Gabby Stoyan and Mallory Miller <laughs> on the career scoring list later. But I want to start with your story and where it starts. And for you, it's Redwood City, California. Just tell me a little bit about where this where this place is you grew up and, and what it was like playing soccer there and playing sports there yeah redwood city is a little like 30 minutes south of san francisco um and you know the bay area is kind of like a tight knit because the cities are pretty close together um el camino is like the major street that flows through basically every single city in the bay area which is pretty cool um my house uh i grew up about 10 minutes from stanford so i went to a lot of stanford soccer games growing up um which was really interesting, especially when we get to go back um, to Stanford uh, to play and this season too. So it'd be really cool to have friends and family come and join. So I'm excited for that. What's the sports scene like there? I'm sure right, you raised a Niners fan. Yes. Warriors probably. Yes. <laughs> um, were you playing all those sports growing up there? Or did you just focus on soccer early on? Um, I played... I, my, the first sport I played was like a t-ball league and a you know a little league baseball. Um, my brother played baseball throughout high school, um, so that was kind of the motivation for that. Um, and then I started playing soccer when I was playing at recess, and some of my teachers told my mom that I needed to get into um, AYSO, which is like the rec league. Um, so that's kind of how it started. I started kind of late. I started when I was I think third or fourth grade, which is when I was like eight years old, I think. So most soccer players start when they're like four or like as soon as they can walk, basically, they start playing. So, um, but yeah, um, that's kind of how I started playing soccer and it just took off from there. So when you were playing little league, baseball, t-ball, all that fun stuff, what position were you playing? Oh, that's a good question. I definitely was a batter first. And then I think I was first base because that's because I'm left handed as well. So you know, playing for space, but definitely for lefty is good. Gotcha. The AYSO version of Jill as a soccer player, what's the scouting report? What were we like as a youth soccer player? Oh, I couldn't even tell you. I know I played center mid for some reason. I mean, uh, now I play wherever, you know, Becca needs me, but which is mostly forward. Um, but I played, uh, I ended up playing with, I was on the same AYSO team as what would be my future club teammate, which was pretty cool. Um, we played on different teams a little bit growing up. And then once we started hitting, um, once we started joining a team that was to get us to go to college to play soccer, that's when we came back together. So it was pretty cool to reunite with her. And so, yeah. Do you remember your first goal ever in soccer? Oh, absolutely not. No, I, I couldn't even tell you. Do we, we have any early AYSO goals? Oh, I'm sure we did. I think I definitely was a... Uh, more of a cis, you know, type girl <laughs> at that time. <laughs> uh, what about high school? High school goals, you remember any of those stick out to you? Any memorable plays from, from your time before coming to U of A? Uh, yeah, my freshman year, it was, so they don't have state in the Bay Area because that's more of like a Southern California thing. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, what's called CCS, which is Central Coast Section. So that's basically all of the high schools like in the Bay Area and North. Um, so that's kind of like our state because California is so big. Yeah. Um, and I scored um, in like the final minutes of our semifinal game to get to the CCS finals. And that year we won. Um, we were co-champions because they, they didn't do overtime or like p penalty kicks or whatever for some reason, <laughs> which was weird. Um, but yeah, I'm the, I hold the record for my high school for goals. So. Humble brag there. High, <laughs> high school record holder. I like it. Yeah. So you're, you're going through high school, you're, a, you're uh, a star in high school. What does that story turn into or in chapters of that of, all right, now I'm good enough, I know I want to play in college and kind of the whole recruitment process for you? Yeah, it was definitely a little bit different and kind of weird because um, my parents didn't really play in college. So that was kind of new to me and like recruiting was very new. Um, I didn't have a lot of people around me that like went through that same process. So it was definitely a learning experience for sure. Um, but I just knew, and now the rules have changed where you can't talk to a recruit until like their junior year of high school. 
you know, I committed in my sophomore year of high school. Um, so it was definitely a little bit weird and kind of nerve wracking to talk to coaches and reach out to them to come to our games. And, and at that time, Surf Cup in San Diego was like the biggest tournament that there was. Um, so that was where a lot of coaches would, would come and watch. Um, but it was definitely nerve wracking, you know, talking to people who were like, oh, do you want me to come play for you? Like that kind of thing. Um, but overall, like, I'm, I'm so happy that I made this choice for sure. When did you first realize this was the right decision for you? Was it right away when you got to campus? Was it because you had you had an injury your first year? Mm -hmm. So before before that moment, when did you realize was it when you stepped foot in Tucson of yeah this was the right decision? Um, honestly, I, I knew when I visited here um, that was something. As soon as I stepped on campus, I remember uh, Coach Paul Nagy was the one that took me on my visit, and. Um, yeah, as soon as I stepped on campus and I saw the mall and I just thought it was so cool how the campus is so large, yet it's like a small community type thing where everything is right there. Um, it's not spread out and you could see everything, but you know, um, it still take you like 20 minutes to walk from end to end. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then every time I stepped on campus since then, um, it just reaffirmed my my choice. A lot of people say Tucson's a big college town, right? Yes. It has that town feel. Is that similar to what you felt growing up in Redwood City? Did it have that same kind of town feel to you a little bit? No. Different? No. There are so many Bay Area college and pro teams that it's really hard um, to have a set community unless you're at that specific game, um, which I think, you know, it, it's cool. Um, but I definitely think Tucson being all about Arizona is, is the best feeling um, you know, when we travel, there's always people from all over the place that come up to us and say like, oh, bear down, like in front of us. And for a while, like in the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> but then I learned like you're supposed to say go cats, like that's the response. Yeah. So, you know, that's what we say now. Um, you know, I've learned through my time that that's the appropriate response. Um, before I was just like, thank you. Like it was like weird. But um, <laughs> but, you know, like you see people from wherever we go, whether I'm, you know, as long as I'm wearing Arizona something, someone's going to come up to me and, and say bear down. So you, you're here, you're starting your college career and you have a knee injury first year. Do you, do you remember how it happened specifically? Is that just burning your memory of, of your knee injury? Yeah, I remember how it happened. Um, usually, so I, that was my ACL that was torn. Luckily no meniscus or MCL or anything else, which is good. Um, good as it could be, you know, um, but yeah, I was at training. It was about two days before our first exhibition match, um, my freshman year and, um, two of our left backs had already been hurt. One is coming back from meniscus surgery, had only had a, a few weeks left until she could play. And then another, the one that was going to replace her, um, tore her ACL about two or three days before that, before I tore mine. And so, you know, um, I was next up to play left back, even though that wasn't my position, but I was willing to play it and, you know, do my best. Um, and it was contact. Usually ACL tears aren't contact, um, but this one was, um, I was just clearing the ball out and one of my teammates like came through and ran through the, ran through my leg, basically. Um, you know, it sucked, um, but I'll always remember, you know, since I tore my ACL, like, it's painful and then there's no, like the ACL is gone. So there's no like pain receptors anymore. So it kind of just went numb. And so I remember telling um, our trainer, Adam, I was like, so can I go back in? Like, I was like, it doesn't hurt anymore. And he literally looked like, looked at me like I was crazy. It was really funny. <laughs> what was that like overcoming that? Especially, you know, it's tough to overcome a seizing an injury or a serious knee injury at any point in career, but literally you just had gotten here, you're getting ready to, play your first college career, first college exhibition. What was that mindset like to overcome and how challenging was that? It was definitely really challenging, especially being a freshman, being in the dorms. I had gone through a full summer of gym sessions, which are the hardest thing <laughs> to go through um, with the heat and you know how intense gym is and, and how much we have to run to prepare us to, to play um, 90 minute games. Um, it was hard, I was in the dorms, I didn't have a car. Um, so I was kind of stuck. All my roommates traveled, so I was kind of alone a lot. Um, but my mom would come out as much as she could, 
um, to, you know, come and visit me and we would like get like an Airbnb or whatever. Um, and, 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 you know, she would spend time with me when my teammates were gone, which, you know, I'm forever grateful for. Um, but it definitely, it helped me, you know, change to a growth mindset because I could have easily been very pessimistic in, in what I was going through and it could have, you know, deterred me into something that, you know, that could have hindered to where I am today. Um, but I was just really excited to be able to get back on the field because all I wanted to do was play soccer. And that was, um, that's always been the main goal for me. So overall, I did everything that I could. I spent, you know, so much time with the gym, um, you know, doing upper body until I could actually use my legs and, and then doing that, having to, you know, do fitness with one leg um, on the bike, which is a lot harder than, than it is with two, this for sure. Imagine. Yeah. So, um, but overall, once I was finally able to step back on the field, um, I, I didn't play until the last 10 minutes of our last spring game of my freshman year, which was amazing. So, so let's flash forward to a, a more happier time, celebratory time. Your first game on the pitch, I went and looked it up, August 18th, 2017. You remember where that was? Were we at Oklahoma? At Oklahoma, number 16, <laughs> Oklahoma. Your first career goal, Yeah. the first of many, in your first career game in Arizona. What do you remember about that? Uh, Amanda Porter was a credit with the assist. Yeah. Do you remember much about that one? Yeah, so the person who passed it to Amanda was the girl who also tore her ACL that I had done uh, rehab with that entire um, previous season. So it was really cool. Um, and I kind of, that was, I think that was kind of a goal that really showed like why I was recruited. Cause I basically just ran, like Amanda played an amazing ball in. All I had to do was run after it and, and shoot it. Um, so that was a lot of the stuff that I did in club. Um, but it was so nice to be able to to get that goal in my first game back and and you know especially beat you know a good Oklahoma team at the time. So left footed goal on that one, do you remember? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. So the first of first of many goals for your career right there against uh, number sixty Oklahoma, which by the way Wildcats won two zero was the mm -hmm. final score over a nationally ranked Oklahoma in your first career game, um, and that was the start of a long career for you, Jill. You know, as of today. 82 matches played. I don't know that might seem like a lot to you so far, <laughs> uh, but what has it been? What has it meant to you to be a part of this program for over 80 matches, but really part of it when it's been built back up to a national caliber program, not just a regional Pac-12 program? Yeah, I think that was one of the things that um, drew me into Arizona in the first place was um, they're growing and I wanted to be a part of a team that is growing and getting better and is going to, you know, start setting the stage and building a foundation to a really, really great team. And I think that um, that was, I mean, among a, a bunch of other things, that was a main reason why I chose Arizona. Um, you know, I grew up watching Stanford, you know, going to Stanford games. Um, and I, I, they're a great team and they're historically a great team, but I didn't want to, I also wanted to make sure that I get on the field and see the field um, because I didn't want to be somebody who says, Hey, I'm on the team, but I'm not contributing, um, you know, on the field. So I think that was something that was really important to me. I wanted to play. That's always been my main goal. I always want to play. So um, that's, you know, that's what made that decision a little easier. So here we are in, in your, final season here, when you look back 82 matches prior, is there one moment that you look back to now that you're older and say, you know what, I'm proud of how I handled that? Was it, maybe it was the ACL injury, maybe it was your, your adjustment to college. What is a point of pride for you when you look back to your entire career here? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I think as a team, historically, since I've been here, we're very overlooked, whether that be um, for women's soccer, like nationally, um, and even in the Pac-12, you know, we're, we're usually finished or picked to finish, you know, very close to the bottom. And, you know, usually that's never how it goes. There was one year where we finished fourth and people still don't necessarily give us the recognition that I think that we deserve. Um, so that's something that 
I feel prideful about where we are better than a lot of people think we are. So I'm just like, go ahead and underestimate us and we can prove you wrong. So that's something that, that I've been, I've noticed throughout my time here is that a lot of people kind of write us off and then, you know, we come out and shock them and then, but then of course, you know, people are like, oh, it was a fluke or like that was a one-off game when, and then in reality, we start hosting tournament games and making it past, you know, really good teams. So, I mean, that's just something that a lot of teams deal with. Um, but that's something that's specific that I'm, you know, I'm really happy about our team that, you know, we're able to go out and prove a lot of people wrong. And part of that proving people wrong has been your own, I know you want to focus on the team as always, but your own success. Um, here we are, you're just, show, just shy of 30 career goals. Uh, third place in program history, one behind former teammate of yours, Gabby Stoyan. Um, what's it like to be chasing and nipping at the heels of somebody in a very illustrious category of somebody you played with? Yeah, um, I remember playing with Gabby. Specifically, I forgot what, I think it was her senior year, we played Oregon State. Um, that was like one of our best games that we had played that season. Um, and so, yeah, I just remember, you know, Gabby's very hardworking. She's a small person, but she's very fierce, has a strong shot. You know, she's very dynamic, has really good foot skills. And, and overall, she, she did really well for our program. And, and I'm happy that I got to play with her. Now, I know everybody's a little superstitious or very routine oriented. But for you, game day, what's the Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora playlist we're going to? Go to for Jill Aguilera on game day. Oh, um, I don't necessarily have the same playlist. I usually try and go with like, um, you know, what's really popular in the moment. There are some times where I like to play um, some like two thousands pop or hip hop, like nineties that kind of stuff because I, I you know I, <laughs> I grew up at that you know mm-hmm. um, especially with my brother he's older than me so. I was forced to listen to a lot of his music as well growing up, um, which I appreciate now. Um, You know, there are some, you know, old like TLC, you know, Beyonce, um, trying to think, um, Avril Lavigne, um, Vanessa Carlton. Even sometimes it's not like always like pump up. It's kind of like um, sing along or just like get ready and, you know, and, and get prepared for the game. So, you know, those kind of music sometimes and then whatever is like, hot and new right now so we're we're starting pac-12 play here um you know you're coming off a playing in the spring because of the COVID-19 pandemic which was an adjustment for everybody I'm sure but you didn't have to come back for another year and Mm -hmm. you chose to yeah you want to talk a little bit more about what went into that decision and, and looking back at it now kind of how you feel about that yeah um I I just knew that if I had the opportunity to play one more season, I'm going to take it. Um, also, it would give me more games under my belt, not just, you know, as a, like a stat or whatever, just to, you know, for to, for me to be able to have more experience um, in the game. Um, I, if I were if I wasn't here, I'd be at home like training. So might as well um, get an education and, and, and play. Uh, and obviously now first year under head coach Becca Moros, what's it been like playing playing for Becca and kind of her twist on things and how she's running the program? Yeah, I think we all love Becca. She's very, she's, she's very, you know, our style is now possession, um, but it's very different. She talks about that it's not keep away. It's, you know, finding numerical advantages all over the field and, and, and using that to, to score goals and get forward. Um, Yeah, we do a lot of fast paced things, very competitive, um, detail oriented. We go very small when it comes to like technical stuff um, to where like the way that your foot is positioned and how it should feel every time you pass to know that, you know, that's the the right area of your foot that you should be passing with. So and I think, you know, she's a great coach and she's a great motivator. She's a great mentor to everyone. I think everyone looks up to her, Lorraine and Brian. That's awesome. Now, you have this very storied, historic career on the pitch, but away from it, if I can humble brag for you a little bit, Pac- Academic All-Pac-12 Conference, Pac-12 Academic Honor Roll, 
Academic All-American last year from Cosida and an NCAA Woman of the Year nominee. So that's a lot of great things that have nothing to do with playing on the field. Why is that why is that important to you? Why did you choose to, you know, really pursue your interests in and life outside of soccer that hard to that level? Um, I think ever since I was younger, um, my mom always really prioritized education for me. Um, she told me that if you wanted to play in college, you have to be good in school and you have to do well in school because if not, they're not going to want you. And, um, and I think I just took that to heart and I think it's really important. Um, and now, you know, we talk about being student athletes and they always say you're a student first. And I think a lot of times people can write that off a little bit saying like, well, I'm here to play a sport. Um, but I think if you find a, a good balance, uh, you could honestly feel happier of, of you, you know, of being able to further your education and play the sport that you love at a really high level. Of all you've accomplished outside of soccer here at Arizona, is there one that you're most proud of or an experience outside of soccer you, you think back finally of that gives you that bigger smile? Is it a community service? Is it something you achieved academically? Um, outside of soccer. Um, I think when I first heard about the NCAA Women of the Year um, nomination, I was really shocked, very unexpected, um, but extremely grateful. Um, I had talked with Lucy John, um, you know, in previous years, and she had won it um, at her time here. And, um, you know, that's who I first thought of when, when I was hearing about it. Um, and. And I just think that she's a great overall person. She was an amazing athlete. She's a great mentor. Um, so I was just, I thought about her and, you know, what she's done and her accomplishments at Arizona, whether that be when she was a student athlete or, you know, being a staff member here um, and, you know, being a part of. Um, and Olympia our, too. Yeah, exactly. And being a part of our development as student athletes. Um, so that was pretty shocking. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of, that uh, for myself for you know getting that far that was really unexpected and, and I'm just grateful that you know I was considered so you have this championship pedigree on the field you have this outstanding resume as it were away from soccer what's what's in this cards for after college you know, what's 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 what are we looking forward to what are our plans and and what do we hope to accomplish when we're done here at the University of Arizona so my plans um, is to play professionally um, in the 2021 draft. That was very weird. Um, I got picked up by Chicago Red Stars. So I was a discovery player. It was very, the. I'll try and explain the rules of how it happened <laughs> because it's very weird. You know, normally it's just like a regular draft and then they have discovery players after the draft who they pick up. Um, and you have to enter the draft to be, you know, picked. Player, yeah. yeah. So this year, you didn't have to enter the draft to be drafted or picked up as a discovery player or whatever. All seniors were eligible to be picked up no matter what, if they entered or not. So that I didn't know um, when the draft was happening. And then after the draft, they had said all seniors who weren't picked up are ineligible for the 2022 draft. So I was like, wait, what? Like, that's <laughs> kind of weird because that was my plan. I was planning on, you know, entering that draft. So I was a little nervous, whatever. Um, but the next morning, um, Coach Tony um, called me and said that if I had watched the draft, if I knew about what they said, and I said, yeah, I was a little confused. And he said, um, well, doesn't really that doesn't really apply anymore because you got you know Chicago is looking to get your rights um, it's also after the draft it's still like a draft list so if people put in for my name it's whoever's on the top of that list for the draft for the next selection um, so Chicago ended up getting my rights um, I've had a few uh, zoom meetings with the coaches um, they wanted to get uh, their draftees out to Chicago to meet everybody but they were in the middle of season and you know, dealing with COVID still, it was just really difficult. Um, but overall, that's, you know, that's my plan right now. Anything could happen in between that time, you know, how 
professional sports go, you get traded for whatever reason, you know, you get released and then some other team picks you up or, you know, so I'm definitely grateful really right now to have Becca, um, to be able to, you know, utilize her experience in, um, in the NWSL to help me navigate that. That's awesome. yeah. yeah. That's, that's a great relief. Well, Hopefully that uh, that process works out well, Jill. We've got a lot of soccer here for the Wildcats left and uh, a lot of time left for you to continue to build that legacy that you have here. And so I want to thank you for stopping by here on the Bear Down podcast and telling us your story. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.